at the end of this video, we're going to go out to my garage and do a compression test because one of the most important tests you can do to any engine to determine its health and how much life it has left is a compression test, whether your engine's a diesel or a time-honored Atomic 4 or the outboard for your dinghy, that's what we're going to do today, or even your generator. If it's running rough or questionable in any way, this test is for you. But it's also for you if you're boat shopping. It's hard to tell the health of an inboard engine especially, but this test will give you a lot of extremely valuable information before you spend your hard-earned dollars on a big purchase, like a boat. Philip Decker, who writes for us, fills us in on how easy this test really is. I'll leave a link in the description to the full article if you want to follow along. An engine compression test, he says, is an important diagnostic test that any boat owner can do with equipment that costs about $50. You can also rent a compression test for most places. The compression test measures the maximum pressure created in each cylinder by the pistons when the engine is cranking. The results of the test can tell you many things about the health of your engine. So why do a compression test? First, a little background. For a diesel engine to work, the engine needs air, fuel, and compression. For a gasoline engine, add spark. If your engine will not start, is hard to start, runs roughly, or produces smoke while it's running, the compression test is a good test to perform to help diagnose the problem quickly. So what is a compression tester? A compression tester is typically sold as a kit that has a pressure gauge, a short hose, and a variety of threaded fittings that fit the holes for glow plugs or fuel injectors and or spark plugs. The pressure gauge for a diesel engine tester will often go up to 1000 PSI, and the gauge for a gas engine will usually go up to 300 PSI. The pressure gauge will hold the needle at the highest pressure it sees during the test. A release button on the gauge will release the pressure and return the needle to zero. So how do we do a compression test? Well, we warm up the engine to operating temperature if possible. We disable the fuel flow for a diesel or disable the ignition for a gas engine. On a diesel engine, we disable fuel flow by pulling on the stop knob, usually at the helm, and keep it pulled all the way out for the test. This shuts off the fuel to the engine. For a gasoline engine, like an old Atomic 4, we pull out one end of the high tension wire between the ignition coil and the distributor cap to disable the ignition so there's no spark. Remove all the fuel injectors or glow plugs for a diesel and all the spark plugs for a gas engine. Install one of the compression testers threaded fittings into one of the holes for the injector glow plug or spark plug. Crank the engine for six to eight revolutions. The pressure gauge will automatically hold the needle at the highest pressure setting that it saw. Record the pressure for that cylinder. Then press the release button on the gauge to return the reading to zero. Repeat that for each other cylinder. What can the results of a compression test tell us? The normal maximum pressure for a diesel engine is somewhere between 275 and 400. The normal max for a gas engine is usually between 125 and 175. These figures depend on the design of your particular engine. I found specifications for the Westerbeek 42 horsepower diesel engine in a technical manual that I downloaded free of charge. The manual says the pressure should be between 370 and 455 PSI. The readings for each cylinder should be within 20% of the average for the other cylinders. If a weak cylinder is flanked by a healthy cylinder, the problem either is either valve related or head gasket related. In my case, cylinders one to three read about 400 and cylinder four read zero. This led me to the problem of a broken valve that I saw firsthand after I removed the cylinder head. Low pressure readings could be the result of a blown head gasket. Low pressure could also be the result of piston blow-by, dry cylinder walls, or valve blow-by caused by worn cylinders or piston rings, which could also cause white smoke in the exhaust. Also look for incorrect valve clearances or sticking valves. These can be checked after taking the valve cover off before attempting to remove the cylinder head. Abnormally high readings on all cylinders indicate heavy carbon accumulations. Do not forget to check if a decompression lever has been left on if your engine is equipped with one of those. The decompression lever would be at the end of the valve cover on a universal diesel engine. It is more common on older diesels, while my 1998 Westerbeek 42B4 doesn't have one. 
Should a boat owner do a compression test first? Not necessarily. My mechanic, Diesel Don Schuler, started with adjusting the valves. I think he started with this because valve clearances that are out of timing adjustment could let unburnt diesel pass the valve seats and show up as white smoke coming out of the exhaust. Valve adjustment is often overlooked and not frequently done, according to Don. It is understandable of the valve adjustment on a 25-year-old engine like mine could have been out of adjustment, but it didn't look difficult to adjust the valves, and it looks like there are clear directions in my Westerbeek manual. All it takes is a short screwdriver, short because engine compartments are tight, an open-ended wrench and a feeler gauge. It's good practice to replace the valve cover gasket after removing it, so one should have a replacement gasket on hand when adjusting valves. However, adjusting the valves did not solve the white smoke issue on my Westerbeek. Don also replaced all the fuel injectors as an overdue maintenance issue, since fouled injectors could have also caused the white smoke. That did not solve the issue either. We ended up replacing all the valves and valve guides, head gasket, exhaust manifold gasket, and air in the inlet manifold gasket, not just the broken exhaust valve on the number four cylinder. After fixing the engine, including readjusting the new valves, I note that my Westerbeek now purrs like a BMW. In my case, Philip says the compression test was crucial in diagnosing the root cause of my engine problems. My engine had low power and was belching white smoke. Removing the valve cover and adjusting all the valves did not resolve the matter. The compression test found zero pressure in one cylinder and normal pressure in the others. That led us to believe that the problem was the head gasket or one of the valves on the bad cylinder, which we confirmed when we removed the cylinder head and found a broken exhaust valve. The white smoke was unburnt diesel escaping through the exhaust. If the problem lay elsewhere, such as stuck piston rings or worn cylinders, the remedy would have required removing the entire engine from the boat to access the underside of the engine. That would have been much more expensive and much more disruptive to our lives as live aboard cruisers. Now that we know what Philip went through and documented for us, we're going to take his knowledge and we're going to go run a compression test on an outboard. You join me in my garage at my personal 99 four stroke Mercury that I've taken down the East Coast through the Bahamas. It has hundreds and hundreds of hours on it and is a very tried, tested and true outboard, but I've never done a compression test. And while Phil tells us to do it with a warm engine, that's not gonna be possible. And in many cases for you, it won't, but let's see what we come up with. We of course do have a compression tester on hand and this is what they look like. I own this one, it was about 50 bucks on Amazon, but it comes with the pressure gauge with the release button that Phil was talking about and a number of fittings to screw into a spark plug hole or a glow plug hole or whatever sort of hole your engine has into its cylinders. Now this Mercury is obviously a two cylinder outboard so we have two spark plugs. We're gonna disconnect the leads so that there's no spark going to the engine. And we're gonna pull the plugs, the top plug and the bottom plug. Now, as Phil said, we're gonna thread in the hose that comes with the compression tester, but I just realized this is far too big for that spark plug hole. So we're gonna try an adapter first and try to find the right one. We wanna be very careful not to cross thread this or have it go in weird in any way. And that one feels like the right size. And we're just gonna spin the hose gently. And yeah, we definitely have a bite there. So we're gonna spin it down to the rubber gasket on the fitting and just finger tight Spin the hose, that feels really good. We should have a good seat there on the rubber gasket. And of course we connect the gauge. The gauge is zeroed. And I'm gonna set the gauge down. Now that we have the gauge installed, I'm gonna set it down somewhere where it's not gonna be too in the way. And I'm gonna give the engine six to eight rotations as Philip suggests. It's gonna be kind of difficult because it's a pull start, not electric. It's a lot easier when you're using an electric motor. but. We'll pull start at six to eight revolutions, keeping an eye on the gauge, and it should max out and go no higher. And what we're seeing is the peak on this gauge is about 158 or 160. We're gonna try the other cylinder now. And what we're getting on the gauge now is about 150, so about eight PSI lower, well within a 10% variance. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you learned anything. 
and hit the subscribe button. We bring out a new video every Monday and every Saturday. I'll see you next time.